Are you holding NNE for the long term? Yeah, but it's not like, oh my god, NNE is the one. That's going to be the best one. Uh, no, it, it's just that kind of like I've done with Joby in, in, in that sector and like uh, Evgo in that sector. I try to identify the one that is the leader of the sector, not just from, you know, not from the price. People think that because the stock price is higher or whatever, it's the leader. That's not how that works. Um, you know, which one has the most contracts, the most permits, the one that has the most, uh, you know, revenue, backlog of contracts, uh, lowest amount of debt. Like I look for the, the most stable, like the, the, the leader of the company in the sector. But I also know that if I'm in a speculative growth or momentum stock or sector, I have to babysit it because there's a chance that it can no longer, it may no longer be the, the leader. In I, I was in ACHR way before I was in Joby. ACHR was the first stock I was in in the, in the EVTOL uh, sector. And I eventually sold it to get into Joby because I saw Joby was overtaking them and I've been in Joby since, even though Joby makes no money. Evgo, I was in uh, uh, Volta or whatever the fuck that other company was in the EV charging sector. And then I saw Evgo start emerging and I just moved over. NNE, you know, SMR is the better one because they actually have a, a, a product and they actually have, you know, whatever. But of this, of between NNE and Aklo, Aklo, the reason that we got into Aklo at $20 was, if you remember, was the Sam Altman connection, right? So, you know, th this is, I I'm, 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 People say I'm like Rain Man if, if he was retarded, right? Like, I get why they say that. But it doesn't mean I'm smart. It just means I, I try to put together different things. And sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. So the whole reason that we got into Aklo, if you remember, we got into Aklo at $18.92. And the reason was is because we put those pieces together, okay? The reason we put those pieces together. And the whole reason that we started, and people in this community are still in Aklo, the reason we got into it was Sam Altman. Now, you might say to yourself, what the fuck does that have to do with it? Okay, Aklo. Altman and another guy have this company. They start this company, right? So you've got Sam Altman. Let's put Sam Altman here. Well, Sam Altman on the board at Aklo, right? Co-founder of Aklo. But Sam Altman is also the founder and CEO of OpenAI. OpenAI has a direct relationship with Microsoft. This is back when we first got into it. Microsoft and the continuing, you know, OpenAI, you know, uh, partnerships. Data centers. Data centers need power. Small modular reactors are the best option. Well, I know a guy. I know a guy. So as OpenAI continues all of these partnerships with these companies, and they're all going to need data centers and whatnot, they have a direct working relationship with OpenAI. The same guy who's running OpenAI has that direct connection to Aklo. And if they need an SMR, who do you think they're going to get a deal from? Or who do you think they're already going to have part of their contract with? That was the catalyst. Oh, by the way, the other co-founder of Aklo, guess where he's at right now? This is the exact reason why we got into Aklo under $20. Sometimes you have to, not saying we're going to be right. Like, I'm not like, oh, I fucking knew this was going to go a thousand percent. But my type of cowboy investing kind of thing, this is how I invest. This is the way I invest in shit. I look for the leader in a sector or who's going to lead the sector, what the next trend is going to be, and I try to put the pieces together because guess what? This is how business works. Yeah, but the fundamentals, they don't actually turn a profit, and their products aren't even expected to come for five years. Or that. You don't invest for the next three years. You invest for 20, 30 years down the road. That's why everybody's trying to jump in because they think it's going to be the next big thing. This may not be the next big thing, okay? It may not. This company or SMRs may fail or there may be regulations. You know, this guy might might lose his job. Sam Altman might fucking, you know, give up on something. They may go to, I don't know. But this is the, 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 the fucked up brain I have, the part of it that does do some of this stuff. That's kind of how I see things before I get into investment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you're going to be in a position, you also have to recognize that it may not be the best one later on. It may be the best one at the time. I invest in companies that have zero revenue with a market cap of $20 billion. Because I understand the market right now. It's a fucking frenzy, wild west. Everyone's buying everything. Buy every dip fucking bubble that just keeps growing and is fucking, but it's going to burst. Fine. Fuck it. It's going to be glorious when it does. I'm going to ride that bitch up until it does. Okay. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. We all know it's a bubble, but the people who yell about it being a bubble, the loudest are the ones that are on the sidelines watching it. The bubble's inevitable. The burst is inevitable. But how much does it go up before it comes down? And does it come back down lower than what it was before you started using it as a bubble? No. Well, then you still missed out. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Someone sent me a screen, uh, a recording uh, or a clip of some fucking political streamer on this platform who thinks they're some kind of fucking stock genius. The U.S. is in for a depression. The AI bubble's gonna burst and America's going to a depression. Bro, shut the fuck up. Like, you're, you're, you're no better than all those fucking people out there going, Oh my god, the crash is coming. Oh, burn everything. Oh, this is what you gotta do. No, no, no. Like, shut up. The more someone tries to pretend they know what's going on, the less they know. 
That's why people are so confident in their convictions because they don't fucking know and they, they're too afraid to admit it. Like for me, like I'm, I'm saying, you know, yeah, th there's a bubble. It will burst eventually. How high does it go before it bursts? Does money move elsewhere? But the idea that the, the stock market is going to crash because of an AI bubble, that person doesn't understand why the money's there, where the money's going. You have to worry up, not about the stock market. Stock market is not the economy, the economy is not the stock market. You have to worry about what will make the average everyday investor sell their stocks. Because this is not your granddad and your dad's stock market. It is not. And if you can't recognize that, this is like the 2001.com bubble. The fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is like the 2000. This is nothing like the 2001.com bubble. Every bubble is different. Every bubble is, has a different reason. 2001.com bubble wasn't run by retail traders. 2008 had nothing to do with the stock market. It had to do with the, the fucking public debt. Depressions and, and economic crashes happen to become a public debt. Or sorry, private debt, not public debt. But nobody wants to say this because it doesn't get clicks. 2008 was a private debt problem. Now, the banks were the ones who facilitated it, but it was a private debt problem. Public debt, because we have a money printer and we still have the reserve currency and the still other business military and stuff like that. I have, I have been watching the economy for and some of y'all longer than me, 30 years, give or take, keeping, uh, keeping an eye, paying attention to it. And every year it's, this is unsustainable. We're in for a crash. We're in for collapse. The government can't, this is unsustainable. This is going to do whatever they did. The printing, it's, they, every time we've had one, it was because of private debt, not public debt. Now, eventually that's going to change, but we're not there yet. And I'm not some perma bull. I mean, I kind of am because kind of have to be, but, but this is just how it is. And so it's like, if the AI bubble pops, cool. We enter a bear market, we get a correction, and then we're right back to it because the average everyday person is dumping $5 billion. 62% of Americans are in the stock market now as opposed to 45 pre, pre COVID. I mean, it's just, it's $5 billion a day from retail and 5 billion from CTA is just going into the market. So it's just, it's, it's just, what are you going to do uh, the, when those people stop putting money in or people have to sell their equities for their their private debt, mostly because of, of, of the, the, the labor market, that's when I'm concerned. If unemployment actually goes up, and no offense is going to sound fucked up, but new grads, okay, new, newly graduated people have the highest unemployment rate right now, but they're not in the stock market. When you look at this from a factual basis and not an emotional basis, you got to look at that. The highest accounted, the, 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 the group of people highest accounting for unemployment right now are new graduates, but they're not, they don't have any stocks to sell. But if this AI and, and, and the labor market does start seeing more and more people on long-term unemployment and those people that are laid off and on long-term are investing in the stock market, those are the people that are going to start selling their stocks. That's when I'll get worried. That's when I'll get worried. But there's going to be a, 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 a big drop in the market. Cool. I'll buy the dip because I know it's going to go back up because that money's just fucking pouring back in there. We're in a fucking bubble. Yes, the 1920s. If, 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 dude, this is the roaring 20s all over again. We got three more years until it's all over. Fucking party like it's 19 fucking 25. But you'll stream to tell us, right? But I've been here. I've been here. I was, we were the first ever live stream community to play a game of marbles during a full stock market halt. I ain't going nowhere. That guy on, that, that hater on Twitter who's like, just pump out more Indian kids and take off a day off every time the market's red, you fucking fake bitch or something. What you talking about? Motherfucker, I take the, I, I tell you the day before I'm taking off. You think, you think, you think it's the market's because I, I, I took off because I knew the market was going to be red the next day? Fuck out of here. I would have taken puts, dumbass.